Inside of your project settings under API access, you can create a custom permanent auth token. This token you can use to access data in staging, development, production, and pretty much anywhere else. This allows you to authenticate with GraphCMS to fetch or mutate the data. One of the typical flows is creating a token for development that queries data from the stage draft. This means if you make any changes to any of the content in your project, it isn't reflected on the head or on the front end or your website or wherever your content ends up being. I'd also recommend creating separate tokens for mutating and management API access if you have it. This gives you real granular control over what your tokens can do and what they have access to. It makes it really easy to trace any audits or remove access as and when you need. So let's go ahead and create a token for development that has access to the content stage. Let's also create a token for production. And this time we will say that the production token will fetch content from the stage published. You can give the production key access to stage draft and published, and you can choose to have a default from published or draft. But I like to keep my keys separate, so we'll do that just now. Then lastly, let's go ahead and create a token for development mutations. This will fetch content from the draft stage, and will also allow access to mutate data. And you can see down here, we now have a list of three separate tokens. You can choose to combine these, but we'll just keep these separate for demonstration purposes. If we go ahead and grab the development token and click this here, this will copy the token or JWT to your clipboard, and then you can use this while accessing the API. Now I'm just using graphical bin here to add some headers to my project. So we'll go ahead and specify the authorization header. And the authorization header is in the format of a bearer token. So now that we've added that token here, we can go ahead and access our blog posts. If we also query for the stage, you'll notice that this is coming from the draft stage. If we go back and we copy the production token and make a request again, but this time we'll update that bearer token you'll see that that is now fetching content from the publish stage. If we go ahead and try to create any mutations, such as creating a blog post, you'll see that this fails because we do not have the required permissions. If we go back and we copy the token and we update the token inside of our request headers, we will now be able to successfully run this mutation. If we remove all of our tokens altogether, we'll not be able to perform any type of mutation or query on our data.